control. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Spots and Stripes here in London where Team USA have battled back from 6-3 down to tie the match at 6 apiece. It's the first of seven, meaning this is our final match for Team England. It's Mark Gray. For Team USA, it's Skylar Woodward. And your commentators are Jeremy Jones and Luke Richards. Thanks, Nick. Who do you fancy, Jeremy, this one today? This, who's going to win? Well, I like Sky's chances. Uh it seems like to me he's wanting to come with a shot. Um, Mark's played pretty well today, but his last match, I actually kind of thought I saw a little fatigue. Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. Now the singles can wake you up a little quicker than the doubles if you've got a little fatigue. You yep. get to continually shoot. A, a little more confidence builds from shot to shot. But I wouldn't be surprised if it goes hill-hill. That's for sure. Now one thing I saw about Mark is uh, we've seen some different types of racks and breaks and outcomes after the break, but you have to hit it square to have a chance. And he's missed the one a few times. And then where the, oh, that was very square. So he's got to be happy as far as the way he hit him. But not with the result there. As there uh, nothing went down, he's got a nice shot on the... Uh, on the one ball and the yeah, it doesn't have a ton of angle. There. It doesn't have no. a ton of angle, so I'd probably draw off this instead of going forward with a little inside. Hair more angle, it's easy to get around the three. But with uh, not much angle on a slick table, you want to just draw one rail out towards the two, like so. Yeah, nice shot. He's got some congestion, though, later in the rack. So he's, he's, he's got to, oh, and that's a, that's a little, uh, that's a little light there, Luke. It is indeed, yeah, it's almost uh Yeah, you can see that is, that is the 50-yard line there. And not only that, he's elevated. Yeah. So you just almost automatically, you're adding 20% to the shot as far as difficulty once you become elevated. Nice hit there. Now that needs to slow down a little bit. Oh, that's ideal. Well, I don't know. Can he just kind of hold the ball right there and take the cut on the five? I think he can. And maybe even n nudge the, the, the this side of the eight. Just to barely nudge it. The problem with nudging the eight, you don't want to nudge it too far on top of the six. Then so. you've got a real crowd down there. Right. I still think he's close enough to where he should be able to draw the ball and nudge the eight and not hit it too too firm, tying up the six, I think, anyways. Now he could just go right at the five and maybe bump the five. Okay, I like that shot. I like that shot a lot. Now the, the six passes, doesn't it? On it the, does. Uh, and then the left-hand side. 
I'm not sure the seven passes though, on the, the, so he, he, he wants to get above it to where he can either run into the, the seven and, and open or run into the nine and open. Doesn't want to be short here with the cue ball, wants to be above it. Yeah, there you go. And that looks almost ideal to where he can just hit this naturally and come across the top of the seven and end up playing the seven in the same hole as the six, I believe. Now he may have to float it a little bit because he doesn't want to ricochet off the seven and go into the corner. But I think he's pretty natural. Uh, he caught it too full, but if you notice, he hit the six to the left side of the pocket. So that's why he didn't catch a thinner hit on the seven. Watch where the six goes. That's what cost him the correct hit on the, on the uh, seven ball. Should be okay here to feather this ball and, and run the cue ball safe, though. Oh, he's going that way. That's a little surprising. That tells me he's not going to run the cue ball all the way to the end rail. He's just going to play around in the center of the table, like so. And leave him a gap. Oof, that's close. So it's quite hard, it's hard to see from the overhead sometimes if, if the ball does slip through. Well, he can definitely get yeah. some of it, and I think he can get all of it. So he'll knock the 7 around trying to hold the cue ball there behind the 8-9. So he doesn't need to cut it at all and lose the cue ball. Got to hit it pretty much dead in the face. Is he cutting this in? He's taking a lot of strokes. Okay, and that's what I was talking about. He did pretty well there. They're almost all on the line, Luke. Like kind of like snooker ends up yes. sometimes. He's going. He's okay. jumping. I don't think he can go for the the make though. I think the cue ball is going to have too much uh, movement and a chance to scratch and hop off the table. I think he'll either try to bank it or knock it around the table. Oh, he went for the cut. Wow. Not Watch outside see pocket. Where land. No. <coughs> Boy, and I remember a couple of years ago, Mark Gray was in some big situations for Europe in the Moscone Cup. Uh, I guess that had to be 15, 2015 Moscone, is that correct? Yeah, so yeah he played, yeah. Uh, <coughs> I think he played in Blackpool and... And all, then Al also, Ali uh, Pally and yeah. Uh, he made his debut in, uh, I think, in your last one in 2008 in Malta. That was his debut. Uh, but he he didn't play. We the, the format there was then was the players could play more or less matches. Where now they have to all play the same. Mm -hmm. And that was the year. But Mika, Mika won all the points, and I think and Mark only played two or three games. But uh, he was a winner anyway. But. Uh, I remember that Moscone Cup very well. Yeah. Well. I sure enjoyed going to Malta, though. I'll tell you, it was a nice place. Lovely place, wasn't yeah. it? So winning on his opening break, Mark Gray takes a one nothing lead in our case match. This is the captain's picks. And the some people might wonder why SVB or Chris Milling isn't, aren't, uh, aren't playing this captain's pick. But the stipulation was, if you played the twelfth match, you cannot play the captain's pick. Well, I think I think the 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 twelfth match was also a captain's. Yeah, pick. it was essentially yeah, not, yeah. not part of the of the <laughs> different sections. No. Yeah, different blocks. I guess you might. Yeah, call so it I guess that. he I guess he went with Shane to try and save it, and then Skyler to try and win it. Two ball. Oh, got a little kiss. So another dry break. There's been so many, Jeremy. Yeah, there has been so many. And and one thing that I saw beforehand, though, from, um, I would say more from some of the American players, and maybe not these five, but at times some of these five is, you know, they uh, some of these guys that are young and they've been raised playing the game where a ball on the break is almost guaranteed in most tournaments. Yeah. So, as I think it was Linus from the Peanuts, uh, when you don't have your security blanket, 
well now you can get a little uh, short circuited in yeah. the brain yeah so but that's one thing that I've been very impressed by the young guys this year that they realize that it's not always going to be that guarantee so you essentially kind of have to man up and play pool yeah there's no none there's no guarantee wing ball or anything like right that. right now he's got an interesting shot on the one here he could overcut this towards that pocket and if he gets it into that rail making it by the eight using the eight is a pretty big pocket it's just a matter if he can gain position on the two he's taking a lot of time here He'd like to be able to bank the one straight back down table and lay the cue ball over on the side rail behind the 5-6, but it's a little touchy. I'm not sure what he's doing, really. It looks like he's hitting the right side of the one, and I'm not sure why. Yeah, that, that looked like it was asking a lot. And not just to make the ball, making the ball is one thing, but to maneuver the cue ball by the 8 and back up table for the 2. You see the path of the cue ball mm -hmm. where it was going? Yep. It wasn't very natural at all. No. Well, oh. it's got Skyler back to the table. Yeah, and Sky is, uh, this is one where he'll let the cue ball go a little bit. E and if the four is tied up on the seven, which when the balls were broke, it, it, the seven kind of laid on the four, he may try to break those out if, if it's needed. We can see from this angle that the four is on the seven. It does not pass. So I'm a little, I'm, with the three being there, I understand. Knock the one in, play for the two, and then maybe open with the three, uh, with the four seven. But and I'll tell you today, we've seen those deeper shelves on this on this rest on table uh, make a big difference. A lot of them, a lot of balls have been left hanging there, haven't right? They? And deep in the pocket. So normally you have to draw out of this. You really can't just chip the ball. Uh, th I think you've probably done a little bit of commentary at some time or another. No, this is my first go. Oh, it is yeah. your completely first now. Yeah. It's been a long day, but have you en you've enjoyed yeah, it? Yeah, I've certainly sure, enjoyed yeah. it, yeah. yeah. It's um, it's just interesting to listen to somebody who knows what they're talking about, Jeremy. Right. <laughs> okay, I see a little gap uh, between on that shot there. I could see a little gap between the four and seven, so that makes me think it might slide by there. Now he's looking. I'm, I figured he w if there was any question, he would have looked a little earlier. But right there, the camera makes us think it doesn't go. No. But uh, from the play on the one and two, you got to believe it does. That, to me, that 100% doesn't look like it's going to go. Yeah. But well, I'd like to bet on the go. I'll but tell he's, you that. Uh, he's played <laughs> for it, so yeah. Even though I'm pulling for the other side, that's obvious. But uh, so I have to hit this with a little low, maybe a hair right to spin back for the five in the side. And he'll draw it right underneath where his hands at. Watch out! If he clips the six, it may be no good. A little fortunate there because there's no reason he should have ever contacted the six ball. like perfect speed now being left-handed the cue ball the position should kind of replace where the cue ball is at now that's ideal very natural just a little bit of low maybe a hair left with it kind of slowly pull it towards where it's at now I'd be surprised to go all the way down the table here it's not necessary, but I guess it is the most ideal place on the table. Nice shot. It's not much of an angle, is it? No, but it's so close you can cheat the pocket. You know. And now 
now Mark Gray with a routine nine ball to go up two nothing and breaking in the third game. One thing that we've stressed to these guys though, Johan and I, is you have to realize, uh, I think we talked about it earlier, most matches it's, there's going to be a 2 nothing, a 3-1, a 4-2. Very hard to carry game for game playing nine ball. Just the way the pool gods are and a little bit of luck here and there and one guy making a great shot on you, whatever it may be. So you have to keep your composure. I mean, that said, we've seen plenty of matches over the years where people have come right back from big deficits even in alternate break matches oh yeah uh, when alternate break really started becoming a, a more routine way to play tournaments in america there were many great players that if you got them i'm talking about great players you know races to nine if you got them simply four to one five to one their heart was sunk because in their mind they couldn't come back they just didn't think it was possible and I kind of feel like, how, how did the guy get up four to one if it's so impossible to come back? So. so we've had two opening dry breaks. We'll see what happens here in the third. Ooh, that, and that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Seems to me when Mark's got to hit him a little with a little more, he tends to have a glancing blow on the one, and usually it's just the cue ball ends up on the back rail here and the one's up table. There, it was the ultimate, ultimate fine for miss hitting the one. Yes. Yeah, it shot straight into that pocket off the one ball, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was all him, that's for sure. So he's got a few decisions here. If the three's any kind of tight, there's no reason to, to play the three in the short pocket. It goes up in the far corner easily and offers easy position, but the five going by the nine is the concern. It doesn't go by the six in the upper corner. It looks like it has enough room to slide by the nine. It definitely doesn't have an entire pocket. So when you're looking at this kind of shot, you want to, this is one instance where you want to try to get a hair closer to the five here in a couple of shots. When it's open distance, it doesn't matter that much, but uh, if it's any kind of tight, you want to take it a little bit more of a chance at getting closer. And I think he's almost got an ideal. Well, his straight's, straight's not great. I thought he fell below it a little bit, Luke. So you think that uh, the five ball can pass yeah, I think he's going to have to use a little bit of the rail to slide it down the rail. But uh, yeah, I think it does pass. If he's not liking it, he'll come back for the cross side bank. Doesn't mind taking that on. Okay, nice shot. Cheating the pocket a little bit, using his stroke to get just, you know, that much closer to the five. And when you're shooting at half a pocket, it's very hard to aim that way. And you do what he did, you give it a good look, and it's pure trust. Yeah, nice shot. He doesn't want to fall straight, and he didn't. He's got enough angle just to come probably one rail right towards the eight. Could come two rails out. Kind of depends on how he wants to hit it. There we go. First rack on the board for Team USA there, and it's now 2 1 to England in the Deciding match of this uh, pre Moscone Cup warm up challenge match yeah. between USA and England. Yeah, we've had some fun today, but it's a serious warm up, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, both teams wanted to win, and, uh, you know, it's, just, it's as close as it could have got, which mm -hmm. is currently 6 all and 2 1, so it's good going all the way. Like most of us will say, we might as well make it hill hill now and just play one game for it. It's leaning that way, it looks like to me. Like right there at 2 nothing. Mark Gray, even if he doesn't make a ball on the break, as long as he doesn't scratch, you know, a lot of chances he's he's not going to give up a run out or, you know, give up the game so quickly. 
but now at two nothing, the exact thing that you know Skyler and Team USA needed was maybe a scratch on the break. So now Skyler getting to break the balls to have a chance to tie this match. They hit them nice. Get a kiss here on the nine and open them up. Oh no, the six got in the way. Wow. Well, the two did its job, but the six, uh, the six ran a little interference. And again, a super tough rollout. And this is where I might test Mark on a jump shot. Now, I won't roll him behind the three, maybe, but I might roll into the five right here and, and see what Mark can do with the jump cue. Because that's another one of the shots that if you come from like a snooker background or maybe an English eight ball background that you don't necessarily... Never that comfortable. Yeah, never. Like the break it, for instance, is another one of those shots that Mark is, you know, he's going to get a lot better and better. But as far as like something that's just second nature, yeah. it's not. He's rolled out pretty tough here. I think the cut in the side is doable, but it doesn't come without some risk. And the risk is possibly enough at the bottom there? Well, you know, if you make it, you know, you're not going to scratch. That's the way it lays unless you draw the cue ball. Um, but if you hit it naturally with a high ball, you're not going to scratch. But there's a lot of risk as far as getting snookered. And I'm interested to see. I don't think Sky's going to go offensive here. I'm interested to see what he plays. And Sky's bank's, bank's uh, background, playing bank pool. Uh, not saying he's going to bank at this, but just the little maneuvers, safety, uh, the odd-looking maneuvers and safeties uh, sometimes can really help. Like this. Whoa, the one leaked a little bit. Still a pretty nice effort. Yeah, we, we saw him demonstrate his um, banking prowess. Right, and that's, measure, yeah, yeah, and that's not banking it at the hole, but that's, yeah, him, yeah. that's knowing where the balls yeah. are going, no matter how you're hitting them. Oh, he's got a curve at this. So that means he can't hit it with a ton of speed. That's going to give up a shot. Oh, well, maybe not. It's close. To me, that looks like it um, passes. And the one thing about playing bank pool, not only do you learn how to bank well, but most guys know where the cue ball's going. If you're shooting a ball in the hole, you learn very naturally where the cue ball's going to go or what options you have. But when you're just hitting a portion of the ball and the ball's not going towards the hole, meaning you're hitting it in kind of a foreign area of the table, well, you learn a lot of different natural hits on the ball. So you really learn where the cue ball's going and the object ball both. Tell you it's a, it's late in the night, that's for sure. It's been a long day, but if you look at Sky, he looks pretty hungry. I tell you, he looks he he does look uh, up for it, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. a hair off angle. He could just hold the ball there and play the five in the upper corner if there's any real problem. He just decided to force it. And that's what happens sometimes on the fast new cloth. You, you want to create a little bit of an angle with force and then you actually hit it better than you probably thought you would and then the cue ball travels on you a little much. So is he going to float it or is he going all the way around? Okay, nice shot. And I'll tell you, I've seen quite a few passes on the rollout today by Team Europe. You don't see many at this level past the roller. No, bearing in mind it's obviously a strategic move by the person who makes the roller. Mm -hmm. But normally, 
even if they don't see the same shot as like Skylar saw, normally they can create something, you know, because the rollout you normally have six, seven, eight balls on the table, maybe nine if they if they broke dry. So there's a lot of ways to to try and hide the cue ball or hide the object ball. So what do you think Marcus is uh, telling himself right now after that last break? With the, the cue ball just, cue no, ball beat everything <coughs> to the hole. It wasn't a good one, was it? No. Um, but you think he may take a little off to try and be more accurate? That's, a, that's, that's something a lot of guys do, even if they don't intend to. They just kind of accidentally do it. I, th I, think, that I think he's moved. I think, I think the problem is... Is I think some some of the racks aren't great, so they're feeling they're having to belt it to get right, the most right, out of right, it. Right, right, right. But if but if belting it isn't, uh, you know, you have to know what belting it. If is you're not, if you're not SVB or these guys that have yeah, been yeah. belting them for a long time yeah. when needed. Uh, so now Sky, he's got a decision to make. Because he needs to, he can play a three-seven combo, but he'd sure like to fall on the three for the lower left corner. So he could come two rails and take a little bit of a cut on the two in the side. That's a possibility. I think that's probably what he's going to do. He could play for the two in the corner, but he's got a really good ideal. So here, if he just falls short, as long as he's short, he's okay. Any cut shot to where he's falling towards the bottom rail, he's all right. He's overran it a bit, though. So he's, he's straight enough that it's very difficult to go up the table and back down with accuracy. With, you know, with a, like a good touch coming back down the table because he's got to kind of force it. I have to get another look at the table. I wonder if he can just knock it in and play some type of safety uh, on the three ball. Something simple, like don't take He's a chance. You need, need a you need a bigger angle to get it back up the table. And yeah, back, yeah, you? yeah. Three ball. Well, and I think he's got enough stroke to do it, but whenever you have to hammer it, just like that break shot, well, you lose some accuracy. So he's going to need a little friendly bump here, one way or another. It looks like the cue ball's not going to do it for him. No, he's he's in trouble here. The six has got him cut off on the good kick shot. The one that he may be able to play the nine ball some kind of way up in the upper corner. I believe he's already, did he already use his extension? I thought he had. Pretty, pretty good effort there and he's going to need some help. Oh, and he did get some help. Just took that five ball off the rail enough, uh, sorry, seven ball off the rail enough to stop it being part of a combination. Yeah. And now he could force the three into the rail to where it goes into the rail and it kind of cuts the seven backwards, but I can't, I don't think he can move the cue ball very well and the three's going to go up table, so we'll see here. He's really cutting it. He's really cutting it. So he's take. he's going on. Oh, he got a nice kiss there, I think. Maybe not. Maybe not. So actually it turned out to be a bad kiss. Because Sky would have had a shot without the kiss, but it would have been a long distance shot. Does he have to elevate here and draw his ball? If so, this is one of the touchier shots shooting into the side pocket. And I like his choice there, meaning he didn't go after it to try and get as good on the four as he could. He wanted to make sure that he iced that three ball. Uh, it looks like he can play this natural going in between the 7-5, and five, but either way is fine. It's gotten a little flat here, though, and he's a little bit near the cushion, so he may have to elevate and punch this a little bit toward the rail and back out to the center of the table. No, he can, he can just hit follow and ease it. Okay. You can tell he's pretty thin on the 6, though. 
which makes me think he may get a little thin on the seven also. Ooh. Okay, used every bit of it. I actually worked out it looks like he can go right around the nine. That wasn't an easy run out, was it, Jim? No, it certainly he, wasn't. He and, played and that a, really well, I thought. Yeah, and a few of them weren't so clean, but I think that's also a bit of fatigue. Yeah. Uh, he kind of battled through that and got over the line and uh, mm -hmm. takes a 3-2 lead now. And so breaking. Two racks away from glory, even. Yeah. Well, Sky broke dry in his opening break, but very successful on the last break. Now he got snookered. Uh, he got snookered where he had to roll out, but he made the corner ball. And he made, I believe he made two balls, actually. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think the last time we saw a break where the player nailed it, got ball or balls down, and left a lovely open table for himself, but it seems like a, a while back, I think. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Rack 6. Now let's see what Woodward can do with this USA one. USA to break, leading three racks to two. I don't think he's going to change. I think he's going to stay on that, le that left side rail if you're a player. If you're looking at your screen, it would be a right side rail. But he's been pretty successful in that last doubles and here in the singles. He's made a ball one out of two. Boy, he hit him well. The three? No. Wow. Yet another dry break. And I really think that has a lot to do with our long day here. Not only the matches being close, but you've seen a lot more tactical play after the break uh, at times because of a little bit of clusters and not really a possibility to run out at times. And, of course... When you're not making one, you just don't get going as well sometimes. So we'll see if he pulls out the jump cue. Skylar's pretty quick sometimes to pull out the jump cue. And right here, I don't blame him. I think he should probably bank this down table and take his chances rather than try to cut it. Cutting it is probably you make it or you miss and you lose the game. So I like him trying to bank this down table and take his chances. Like so. Something's gonna it looked like something was gonna go in there, but it didn't. Right. But you have congestion down there, you have balls that the one could have maybe got behind. Yeah. He didn't want to bank it into the five, obviously, but and also the great thing is he could possibly hold the cue ball on the upper rail, leaving some distance for Mark. Another possibility is he, like he did, he kind of jumbled up the five-seven a little bit. And he could have jumbled up the balls worse, made it very difficult for Mark to run out. Extension called. If I'm Mark, I might be going for this. I know the safety is what, like a lot of people would obviously think is the right shot, but I like the great players being aggressive. I oh, hit that sweet. Really made that angle look like it, like it wasn't much it was at all. And shot, it was yeah. pretty severe to hold the cue ball on that side. <laughs> That's called like perfect timing. So is he just trying to go into? I'm not sure what he's doing here. Okay, he was just he had a nice little path to guide the cue ball. So this is a little funny. Obviously doesn't want to be straight on the four. The five doesn't pass the seven in the upper corner, I don't believe. But if he draws out to an angle, he could get elevated. And if he draws too much, 
uh, he could get to where he can't pot, pot the four. So I wouldn't be surprised if he kind of goes into the six a hair here. But the five doesn't go by the nine. The five doesn't go by the seven. I'm assuming it has the side pocket uh, by the seven on the opposite side of the table. gotten over the ball and that was the concern as straight as you shoot like we talked about earlier minimum like 20 percent you can add right here it's yeah. about 50 percent you can add because it's a hair off angle he's cued definitely over where he could foul the cue ball as well he's overcut this badly he's overcut that badly well this is a great chance for Woodward it's the type of shot also that if fatigue has set in, very, you know, very hard shot with a little fatigue. Mm, going pretty close to that seven there. If he had clipped a little piece of it, that wouldn't have been any good, but Got by it just fine. And now we're about to rattle all four in a row. It's nine ball down for Woodward. And he now needs just one more rack for the USA to carry off this pre Moscone Cup warm up event against Team England. It's been a certainly an entertaining, entertaining day's play for for both teams really, and uh, and certainly something that the USA. The idea of it was to give them, you know, uh, a practice against a strong opposition and see see if it can give their game something in advance of the Moscone Cup. And I think uh, it appears it's certainly done that, Jeremy. Yeah, and time on the same table we're yeah, going to exactly, be playing yeah. on it next week. Uh, I wouldn't say the conditions are totally the same. <laughs> I think we'll have a lot more heat on the table next week. Uh, a few more people in the audience yeah. as well. All kinds of heat too, not yeah. just not just uh, lighting, that's for sure. Thank you, Rack Seven. Okay, so we'll see. If, we'll see if he goes back over to the left side or if he sticks to that right. Okay. Oh, he's gone to the end rail. Wow, and a little off angle on the end rail, which is very surprising. Like you never see anybody, but usually if they go the end rail, they go more towards the center of the table. We certainly split the balls up. Yeah. But it didn't get one down. And I don't think the one is cuttable. And it's a little funny because he could bank it cross corner and I don't think he would be a big underdog to make it. I think he'd actually be a favorite. But position is very difficult because you, you're not going to slow roll it and go forward with the cue ball. You would want to draw the cue ball. I think that's what he's going to do anyways. And if he makes it, he'll bank the two, maybe cross sides, something like that. Oh, he went ahead and played it. That's got to go. <coughs> and it did appear he had to cut the one to make the one. He kind of hit it straight in the face a little mm. bit. Oh, he's a little awkward with the bridge again, Luke. Kind of in between a little bit. Is he going forward with the cue ball? Okay, nice shot. Nice shot. Does that uh, two ball pass the four there? Oh, no. Two doesn't pass the no. four, no. So that's but a combination. He's, he's all right. The two should cut the four yeah. in and then open up nicely. You could overhit this a little and get a little thin on the two, but I don't think it's going to be. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Thank you. That was called pocket speed. Open that pocket up with a lighter, lighter speed. Thank you. 
I wanted to ask, uh, I'm not so sure I saw Daryl Peach at the Holland event when we were there. Is he playing pool a lot? Yeah, he's still yeah. playing, uh, plays Euro Tour and, yeah, he, I mean he might have not played in that one, but generally he does play right. regularly on the Euro Tour. Looks like he's queuing up to go to the rail and back out, like so. Nice shot. There we go, that's uh, rack to England. Yeah, and a nice out and nice recovery after a, a, a big mistake on the five ball in the last game. It wasn't no easy shot on the one. Two four combination was a little funny. So now Sky to Woodward. Uh, can't ask for much more than this, having the break to win the match and the, uh, and the event. Good eight for rack. USA to break. And again, I'm not sure why he's really three. looking. He, I don't think he's going to change. He's had decent results the last couple of matches from that, that, that left side rail if you're a player. And like I said, the right side rail if you're looking at your screen. And now he's not going to back off the rack. That's for sure. He's going to hit him with some pace. Oh, yeah. That's the sound you want there, Luke. <coughs> Now, what's the two ball going to do for him? I think it's curtains, Luke. No, I think if it should be, uh, you got to think he's going to get out from here. Don't that was one of the better breaks of the day, I think. Uh, yeah. A really critical time as well. Yeah, and he's a little straight. We can see that on your on your camera. So I doubt he'll use the rail. He may use the rail to gain the angle on the three, or he may just float into position with the angle. He'll have to do a little work to get from the five to the six. But I sure do like his chances. A little thin there. Well, this five doesn't pass the seven, it appears. So he'll probably go one rail right in between the five, seven to play the three in the corner where he's kind of standing. I think, anyways. Yeah, oh. just kind of up into there. That's fine, because if you fa happen to fall straight, you can always draw the cue ball back to the end rail and back down Extension for the six. Extension code. This is si similar to the three in the side he had a second ago. Don't try and do too much. Make sure you get that shot on the next ball. Yeah, that's the shot I liked. Because now if he gains the angle, he can punch over for the six on the short side. And if he gains, gets straight, he can draw back for the six in the, uh, in the right pocket. So. And he's just got to force it a little bit here. And he's close enough to it that... Even if there wasn't much angle, he should be able to gain enough power on the cue ball to get it over for the six. Here, it looks like here is just basically stop your ball. No reason to come back for the angle from underneath, like where the cue ball's at now. You just play the above angle, go to the top rail, and back out for the eight in the side. Great stroke there. And that was the I just woke up stroke almost mm. right there. I'm fresh as a daisy. There we go. Well played. Yeah. And hats off to Team England. They played really well. They did indeed. Yeah. For 
showed a lot of heart in this competition and uh, a double hats off to my team USA. Yeah. They, they worked hard, they played, they were behind and they came back, they, you could see they were, they, they wanted to win and they, they, they grafted at some of those, those run outs, they weren't that easy some of them and uh, yeah, gain that momentum, you know you're not dead, it's uh, eerily similar to Russia. When yeah, we were down there. I, I saw that result. We felt very confident, even still being down three three points in that match. They're just getting ready with the presentation ceremony. I certainly enjoyed it, Luke. Yeah, so did yeah. I. Thank you very much for uh, think you allowing me to sit with you. Yeah, I think you got a, a future. Well, I'm, I wouldn't be so sure about <laughs> that, but I certainly enjoyed it. So Nick Till will be presenting the ceremony, and uh, I think we're going to hand over to him now. So USA are our champions today. They've beaten Team England 7-6 in an absolutely fantastic end to this match here today. Um, Daryl, first of all, just a comment on your team's performance. Yeah, I thought they uh, did well, set off well. Um, um, just it was difficult with the racks. There's a lot of uh, loose racks. The balls weren't racking very well. So it made a lot of, um, you know, sort of scrappy games. So... Um, it's just one of those, just couldn't get over the line, you know. It was 6-3 uh, up and 3-0 uh, up in, in the, the doubles game, just couldn't get over the line. But well done to the USA, they kept going, they dug in, and, um, you know, they did well. Well, Darrell, thank you to you and your team for being here today and putting on such a great performance and really testing USA yeah. as well today. It's been great to watch you all in action, good to have you, so thank, thank you very much. You very much. Uh, Johan, for you, um, from 6-3 down, that was some fight back from Team USA. You must be absolutely delighted with the team. Uh, well, I'm delighted to score. I was already delighted with the team. Um, no, to be honest, we played a really good team here. Uh, England, we know all the players, a lot of Moscone could play the MVPs in there. So, uh, you know, we were kind of on our... Uh, we were aware that we had to play well. Didn't start off all that well. A couple of, like Darren said, a couple of loose wrecks. So it was a bit of a scrappy game. But we put our big big guns a bit on the end so we knew we would be good in the end um, and uh, it happens the same in, uh, in the dream challenge now again it seems to be uh, our uh, you know, our motto come back that's right with this with the dream challenge the performance on the euro tour and at the international open so many positives to take to alexandra palace next week absolutely and uh, you know, we can uh, even uh, go one step up, so uh, we, will, we will prepare this week, we'll talk about things that we think we can still improve and then I uh, hope we can be as sharp as a razor when we go to the Moscone Cup and we can uh, give Europe a good fight. Well, Johan, I'll let you get to your team because there's a trophy for you to collect. Thank you. And our presentation party for this trophy presentation from Matchroom Sport, the Matchroom Multisport COO, Emily Fraser, and from Spots and Stripes, the owner and manager, Nigel Smith, to present the trophy to our champions, Team USA. And that brings to an end our coverage from here in London. Of course, the Party Poker Moscone Cup begins at Alexandra Palace next Tuesday, December the 4th, 6.30pm, live on Sky Sports Main Event in the UK. It's live on Facebook in the USA, also in Central America, South America and the Indian subcontinent. The full list of our international TV broadcasters is available online at MosconiCup.com, where the fans vote is also now open. So do take part in that. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a fantastic match. We hope you've enjoyed it.